2010, a day that 53 years later would end in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. But on this evening, at the home of J.P. Morgan, who was the front man for the Pasteur Empire, these men conspired and concocted the principles for the legislation which would become the Federal Reserve. The participants were Frankie Vanderlip, to become president of New York's National City Bank, representing the Rockefellers and the Jacob Schiff firm called Kuhn, Loeb & Company. Abraham Piat Andrew, Assistant Secretary of the United States. Henry P. Davison, senior partner of J.P. Morgan Company. Charles D. Norton, president of First National Bank of New York, another J.P. Morgan-controlled bank. Benjamin Strong, another J.P. Morgan partner, who became the New York Fed's first governor. Paul Moritz Warburg, Kuhn Loeb & Company partner and a member of the infamous Warburg del Banco Venice banking dynasty, which later moved into Germany and the Netherlands as M.M. Warburg Banking Company, the family that helped create the Bank of England against the laws of the Magna Carta. And Nelson W. Aldrich, Rhode Island Senator, Chairman of the National Monetary Commission and father-in-law to John D. Rockefeller, Jr. This Jekyll Island group, led by J.P. Morgan and the centuries-old European banking elite, engineered a series of public panics, including the Panic of 1907, as they had done in 1873. Rumors were reported through the likes of William Randolph Hearst's newspaper Empire, and Hearst became a large proponent for reforms and a public spokesman for the creation of a Federal Reserve. The Aldrich Plan, as it was known, was attacked by many who saw that it benefited Wall Street bankers. But a second alternative, the real game plan, lay in wait proposed by Congressman Carter Glass of Virginia called the Federal Reserve Act. The new bill had sections entirely identical to the Aldrich plan, but the hoopla confused the public, many of whom were tricked into supporting the Federal Reserve Act because it appeared not to benefit the Wall Street bankers. The Jekyll Island group insisted on making the Federal Reserve appear as if it was an official agency of the United States government when it was not or never has been. A presidential election in 1912 would decide the fate of the Federal Reserve Act. Rockefeller and Morgan's choice, Woodrow Wilson, was engineered to victory by splitting the popular vote between Republican William Howard Taft, who promised to veto the act, and Progressive Party candidate Teddy Roosevelt, whose campaign was financed by associates of J.P. Morgan. With Woodrow Wilson as their presidential puppet, Wall Street and European bankers radically altered our laws and even our Constitution. Through financial contributions to senators and congressmen, Rockefeller used all his tools to consolidate their power. Rockefeller Jr.'s father-in-law, Rhode Island Senator Nelson Aldrich, led a group of politicians that pressured the legislative branch of government to accept the 16th and 17th Amendments. Amendment 16 of the United States Constitution authorized income taxes in their present form and was ratified on February 3, 1913. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration, states the amendment overturning all the principles of taxation without representation on which basis was fought the Revolutionary War. The European banking community centered in London had finally won the Revolutionary War. In order that money could buy a senatorial seat directly to control all future legislation, Amendment 17 of the United States Constitution was ratified on April 8, 1913, and first in effect for the election of 1914. It amended Article 1, Section 3 of the Constitution, and it changed laws towards direct election of senators by the people of a state, rather than their election or appointment by a state legislature as the Founding Fathers had designed. Now, money could buy seats on the Senate, which was vital to the banking cartel because it is the Senate that decides which legislation from the House would become law. While neither amendments have been constitutionally ratified, the courts to this day do not challenge their legality. Congressman Charles A. Lindbergh, father of the famous aviator, warned the country in 1913 that the Federal Reserve Act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the President signs this act,